Hello, welcome to Disco Elysium. It's me, Eve Christian. I am still exploring Tuesday morning. Um, I have thrown their ball into the water, and now I have to get them a new one somehow. That's gonna be fun. Let's see what some of this stuff is. I think this bench I can rest at. I don't think I need to now. Okay, I talked to her. Did I talk to you? Oh, I can go in the bookstore this time. Nice. Maybe I can find a sad song on tape here. The display rack is brimming with worn paperbacks featuring an extremely muscular, sword-wielding barbarian on the cover. Nearly all the titles contain the word Hyamdal somewhere. Let's look through the display of books. Rows and rows of Hyamdalamen blur your vision. You make out some titles. Man from Hyamdal and the Mammoth Riders. Man from Hyamdal, Return to Hyamdal. And the Solipsistic, Man from Hyamdal and the Hyamdal Man. Oh my god. Yeah, good god, how many are there? Maybe a hundred. Man from Hyamdal and the Sages at the End of the World. Man from Hyamdal and the False God. Man from Hyamdal and the Scorched Earth. Man from Hyamdal, the Hyamdal Colonies. Man from Hyamdal and the Swamp Beast. Man from Hyamdal and the Snow Crabs. Is that all? Not even close. Man from Hyamdal in Hell. Man from Hyamdal and the Forest of Slaves. Man from Hyamdal under the lake. Man from Hyamdal, Hyamdal burning. There's even The Trial of Death, a pastoral combat game book set in the world of Hyamdalaman, and so much more. Oh my god. A pain threshold, too. Uh, let's wait. Store keep telling me about the Muscle Man books. Oh, Man from Hyamdal, a very popular series of adventure novels. They're awfully immoral and violent books. Why are they so popular? Blood and violence, scantily clad women, epic narratives, all those mystical things he encounters. They're bound to grab those with little imagination and nothing to do. <laughs> the thing is, I don't think little imagination and nothing to do actually describes Harry. He has a very vivid internal mind processes and... A lot to do. I have an entire list. At last, someone sensible. However, I still urge you to buy one. Can't judge a book by the cover, they say. Interesting. If you're a novice of the series, I'd recommend Hjelmdalaman, the man from Hjelmdal. It's supposed to be a good introduction to the series. Oh, it costs nine dollars, though. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. I'm gonna try this. Nothing of interest. Okay. Only silence and the cosmic background pain radiation. Okay. I'm gonna wait to buy it just because I don't have that much money. Um. And there might be something more important that I need to buy. But at some point I may come back for it. A small mountain of colorful board game boxes. There are numerous types of games for all ages. A lot of shelf space seems to be taken up by Wirral related merchandise. Look through the pile of Wirral related items. An endless variety of source books, law books, and codices litter the table. The topmost book is titled Welkin Compendium, second edition. There's also a large hardbound tome with intricate cover art, The Hunters of Catawack, Boreal Creature Compendium, and a Pick Your Path adventure game book titled Tales of Wirral, Cavern of Velcrag. Okay, these I would legitimately get into, I'm sure. Books in a board game section? Who wants to read books? <laughs> Anything that really catches my eye? There's a box that says, Wirral, 3rd edition Mega Setting Supplements Module. The side panel notes, 
A fantastic adventure board game. New maps and miniatures. A sticker on it displays 25 real. Oh, that's steep. I have no money. That price is steep. <laughs> but then it's the third edition mega setting supplement. So it makes sense. I see. All right, now I'll ask the storekeep about Wonderful them. board games, sir. The Viticulturist is a classic for sure. Or perhaps you'd like Archipelagos of Insulinda. A very educational game for those interested in geography. Browdritter is a fun game of economic competition, but can get quite intense after a while. We have games for the whole family. You can play with your children. I don't feel as if I have any kids. Friends are technically like family. As she fiddles with her pendant, thinking. For playing with friends, I'd recommend Suzerainity. It's a civilization building game where you build a civilization, then set off to brutally colonize and repress other civilizations. It'll cost 12 real. Oh my god. It's very, she's very blunt about it. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah. But apologies, we're all things. Lousy auras there. No, role playing games are popular among those types. You know. Who are into those kind of things. Personally, I don't like it. Not at all. But you have a lot of it to sell because it probably sells pretty well. I've heard they turn people into occult enthusiasts. That they have rituals where they try to summon entities. Highly immoral stuff. You can still buy them, though. She looks at the table, crossing her arms. <laughs> Indeed. What else? The book collects the national recipes of Arda. They are all about lake trout. Sure. Old sports magazines tucked away in a dark corner. Alright, let's go upstairs first. These shelves are overburdened with books from the same series. You see the name Dick Mullen over and over. A couple of spook novels hide amidst all the detective books. Thrilling tales of spycraft and daring do. Look through the display of books. Crime fiction is a disgrace. An asinine misrepresentation of the physical attributes of the arduous everyday work of actual police officers. These books greatly overstate the excitement of police work, glossing over how long it takes to actually follow up on leads and eliminate dead ends. What's more, they completely ignore the psychological hardships of year after year coming into contact with people during the worst days of their lives. Not a single mention of all the stress this work creates upon the officer's family. Detective fiction just doesn't tell the truth at all. Now, would you like a list of all the books found on the shelf? Sure thing. You see, Dick Mullen on the job. Get me Mullen. The Stalwart Adventures of Richard P. Mullen. Dick Mullen and the Murder in the Orchard. The Sordid Affair of Dick Mullen. <laughs> A killing is declared. Dick Mullen in the Murder House. The Final Case of Dick Mullen. An Obvious Lie. Dick Mullen in the Clock Tower. The Ordeals of Dick Mullen. Dauntless Dick. Dick Mullen's Funeral Pyre. The Murder of Dick Mullen. Dick Mullen dies? Oh, no. Turns out he fated to solve a case. Of course. Are there any more? Yes. There's also the dame who did it. Farewell, my Mullen. <laughs> Faking death seems to be a common trope in the Mullen series. The morbid tales of Dick Mullen. A dark tide turns. It's so funny. I have read enough, like, murder mysteries stuff that, um... All of this rings so perfectly true. Tragedy calls for Dick Mullen. Another one with fake death. And, of course, Dick Mullen, the murderer. In order to catch a murderer, Dick Mullen must become the murderer. Mm-hmm. Of course. Of course it, there's one like that. Okay. After all this, 
you still haven't found the answer to the one question that matters. Who is Dick Mullen? Okay, ooh, this is a white chap. Let's try this. Your quick eye notices hey, hey. a small caterpillar crawling across the spine of a book. The title reads, Dick Mullen and the Mistaken Identity. What do we have here? Mistaken Identity. A worn paperback from Dick Mullen's classic, Hard Boiled Phase. The premise seems to be that Dick Mullen is framed for the murder of his best friend and has just a few days to prove his innocence. Hmm, why does this speak to me? Could it be the motifs of unstable identities and shocking betrayals? Hmm. Uh, maybe it could be. Hmm, sure. Then this is the book for you. Okay. I might... I'm, I'm that's the most tempting purchase so far a tome of fascist magic rather candid a quaint picture book brochure very colorful the plaque on the shelf reads biographies of famous people you see a large variety of names none of which ring a bell look through the display books. browsing through all the books with all their names makes your head spin None of these seem important or relevant. It's all just vapid egoism. Suddenly, a particularly odd title catches your eye. It reads, High Speed Love, the tragic true love story of Jacob Irv and Alfie Delatraz by one Cecilia Averbrook. What's it about? High Speed Love chronicles the romance between two of the finest tip-top tournay racers in history. One of them is the madcap driver, Jacob Irv, his blonde mane graces the cover. Next to Irv's life story, you see a slim biography of an Occidental rock star called The Anti-Star. He's famous for shooting morphine into one of his eyeballs and cocaine into the other. Oh my. Next to that, River Sholian radio personality Guillaume Bevy stands in front of a rundown drug den. He's a permanent fixture on Channel 8, reporting on real-life crime and ruining cops' days. I really must insist you buy one of the books. Reading them is not for free. Do still browse, though, but not too long. Okay. I'm sorry, I did not mean to rush you. You are browsing. Go ahead. Take your time. Time is commerce. <laughs> Storekeep anything of note in this shop? I would say... The Greatest Innocence. Yes, most certainly. It's an important educational tool delving into the depths of history, religion, and their relation to innocentic power. Who or what is an innocence? A very influential historical figure. But surely I don't have to tell you that. You're a law officer, and law officers have at least some education. <laughs> she waves her hand as if casting aside the thought. The book is also very daring. The author aims to re-examine the universal understandings of the innocentic system, creating a fresh vantage point and a shift in the tired order of things. Um, hmm. I thought it was about which of these innocences is the coolest and greatest. Perhaps for a layman, deep analysis is necessary to peel back the multi-layered meanings. Do her words seem vague and abstract to you? Yes. Certainly, recommend it. it's prudent for a person to have at least an elementary understanding of history and society. Imagine the chaos we'd be in otherwise. You feel like you should get this one. Definitely. It's important somehow. There's something personal inside. Okay, it's also the cheapest. A true cultural touchstone. Enjoy the read. Okay. Let's see what else we got. Several maps have been attached to a bulletin board hidden inside the alcove. They're held up by small pins. The board has come loose from one corner. The maps look old and faded. Your eye catches a map of Insulinda, a map of Revachol, and a map of Martinez. Look at the map of Insulinda. This large map displays archipelagos. You see a constellation of small dots on the light blue emptiness of the Insulindic Ocean. The largest in the northeast is La Cayu. You are here. Another far away in the southwest, Seminese Islands, Il de Fantôme. 
What else? Ozon, Laurentide, Fas Alamir, Archipelagos, North Arcade Islands. All just specks of dust on the vastness of the Insulindic. On the edges of the map, the color fades into a blur of dotted lines, black and white, disintegrating into mathematics. Hmm. In the northeast, a dust mite stands on the north coast of Caillou in a bookstore. It's you. Squint first. Can you see cities on the island? You can. On Caillou, Rivershaw, a single black star. On Ozon, Fondelier, and Vimandu. On Archipelagos, Croyan Moran, Villiers. On Seminine, Aldivai, and on Laurentide, Deora of the Seven Seas. 850 million people live on these little dots, an oceanic world of culture and commerce torn apart by history. Hmm, look at the edges. The ocean breaks apart into a tangle of cosines and azimuths, all pointing into pale nothingness. Windy is the north azimuth. Grad is the northeast azimuth. Samara is the east azimuth. Seo is the west azimuth. Isolas, they're called. Connections to other worlds, words past the Insulindian, unknown to you. You only know you've never been there. Hmm. Interesting. You have little idea what they are. Distant stars. Gods. But looking at them makes you feel almost non-existent. Whatever they are, the Isolas are immeasurably large compared to you. And very, very far away. Perhaps they are gods. Gods of distance and outer dust. Hmm. So this is like an ocean and its islands are the local world and it's I'm really confused on what these isolas actually are. It, right, conceptualization is impossible. <laughs> Perhaps they are gods, right? I who knows. I I'm curious to see how else that comes up. The north coast of a verdant island is shattered by the delta of a river. It is the River Esperance. Countless bridges put the shards back together, connecting city blocks to river islands. La Delta says a great artificial heart in the center, teeming with life forms and construction. To the east, rolling hillsides, La Jardin, Stella Marie, the suburbs of Saint-Baptiste, swallowed up into the megacity. They sound rich to you. This is Rivershall East. And west of the river? Hudon. It's somewhere to live. Not bad. Then there's Jamrock. It's bad. People shouldn't live there, but they do. Then Forberg. It's almost as bad and much larger. Then Coal City. It's the worst. And Martinez? It's so small you can't even see it on the map. No, wait. There it is. North of Jamrock. The strip of coast next to the Greater Rivershall Industrial Harbor. It looks downright despondent. It's almost Coal City, to be honest. No, this is somewhere to be. This is all you have. But it's still something. Streets and sodium lights, the sky, the world. You're still alive. Look at the map of Martinez. It's not really a map. It's a tourist thing. A picture postcard with buildings on it, drawn from an isometric perspective. A date in the upper right corner says, 48. Still, it's detailed. Could be pretty useful for scouting ahead. You see the jagged boxes of an industrial harbor, even the whirling in rags there. All right, let's see if I can buy these maps. I'm sorry, officer. The map of Martinez is the only one available. The other two are not for sale anymore. And besides, you could scarcely afford them. Okay, now that's true. They're quite valuable, though they might not look it. The map of Martinez is 90 cents, though. Why is the one of Martinez so that cheap? That old thing. It's an out-of-date map of a tourist location that never was nor came to be. From when some design studio people tried to spruce the place up four or five years ago, they also renovated the horse statue, set up those coin-operated viewers, and designed the new street lamps. Interesting. Are those wild pines people? The place does not look like a successful tourist trap, does it? 
What happened then? They didn't get that far. For some reason. A shame. The project never got going. Would be nice if someone fixed Martinez up. All these ruins are bad for business. Alright. I could steal it. I'm not going to. I'm just going to buy it. It's only 90 cents. Always good to be informed of your surroundings. Because now I have a map. But first, I want to check out this. This bookstore is not strictly about crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. There's also a wide range of paranatural literature. Look through the shelf. Amidst the various books, you find one written by someone named Matthias W. Dundas. It's about wholeness, unity, balance. These three things are very important to the working class mind. Oh, they are? The point of the book, and many others on this shelf, is to give people medicinal uh. advice in situations where they don't have access to paid health services. How does that work? It serves platitudes, while also telling everyone that traditional medicine, the kind people don't have access to, and which costs more than this book, is garbage, and would only give you cancer anyway, without even curing your cold or anything. Mm -hmm. Wholeness, unity, balance, on the other hand, can basically take care of anything. Though it is important to note, when it's up to your mind to heal yourself, then it's because of your mind that you're ill in the first place. Right. Which is part of the bullshit of that whole system. Does the book say anything the else? The book features chapters on topics such as how to find magnesium. It even lists plants you can harvest magnesium from. Oh. How to continue drinking if you're an alcoholic who has destroyed his liver. And... Oh, these are actually relevant for Harry. There's even a chapter on the <laughs> ancient Serais tradition of using duck gold black <laughs> preservatives to treat and prevent sexually transmitted diseases. Pre and post factum apply. Nothing worth buying. Storekeep, what books are these? Come, sir, please, no browsing in that shelf. That wisdom is not for free. She narrows her eyes. I can't have you end up, like, opening a police store next door and stealing my customers. Oh, no. Okay, that's fine. I think... Wait, there was one more thing there. Another boring book just discarded here. No, okay. And then... Everyone knows the most interesting thing about fascists was their magic. Yeah. Okay, but now... Um, okay, I got a new thing. I assume to interact with the new books, right? The Greatest Innocence by Joao Paulo Salomão Lopez de Fuego. The book is large and heavy crack open this immense tome. Browsing through the various chapters, you try your best to understand the ceaseless overflow. The sprawl of names, dates, places, events historical. Most of it ends up as a twisted mass of facts inside your brain. Your educational survey is done. Did you catch any of that? No. Oh well. It's pop quiz time. Let's see what you've learned. <laughs> But I this didn't might take a few minutes. It. You ready? <laughs> sure, why That's not? That's the spirit. Here we go. Question one. Who was the first innocence? Oh yeah, this is what I was made for. <laughs> That's so? All right, go on. Give me all the hints you got. A pop quiz is a short examination designed to test your knowledge without oh, no. any prior warning or announcement. Such exams allow the teacher to assess how thoroughly the students have retained the material at hand. Voila. Now blast that first innocence. Thanks for nothing. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> Dolores Day. Dolores. Yeah, that makes sense because I've come across that name before. Incorrect. Dolores what? Day was the innocence of humanism, internationalism, and the welfare state. She codified parliamentary democracy and created modern institutions. Among these, the moral intern, she was powerful and beautiful on all her icons. 
the innocence of humanism, internationalism, and the welfare state. Her colors are silver, white, and apricot. And when you think her name, Dolores, stomach acid rises to the back of your throat, and it hurts. You see a flesh silver, a wreath, an airport bag, and blonde hair. You don't know why. Another choice, perhaps? Stay clear of this one. There's something terrible about this one. What? A strange sensation of loss. Mm. When she left the earth, the dust, and the ice, and the humans. That is unimportant to the quiz. Stop thinking about this. Yes, the quiz is impersonal. No need to rouse sensations in yourself at the mention of Dolores Day. Who was the mm. first innocence? It wasn't Dolores Day. I'm gonna heal that morale loss. I kind of thought it might deal morale damage, but it's like... It's like when you've got, like, a hurt tooth and you have to keep poking at it. It's like, I, I have to poke at Harry. I want to see what makes him react <laughs> that way. Um, so look. Incorrect. Sola was anointed during the previous century and even lived to see the current one. She was an urban planner who spoke her mind and largely left history to its own devices, encouraging people to excel on their own rather than prescribing to a deified model of history. She is often called an anti-innocence. Hmm. Sola resigned after an assassination attempt by a Yugo nationalist who blamed her for not taking the side of the left during the turn of the century revolutions. Innocences don't usually resign. Care to try again? So it seems kind of Pope like, um, but with more political power, maybe more akin to earlier popes. The Pericarnassian? Correct. Nothing much is known about him. It's not even clear that he was a he, but Franco Negro presumed as such and called him Pius. He's depicted as a young man with molten gold pouring out of his mouth. Ooh. All he spoke was gold. It's said he invented God and equality of men before God. He also introduced the gold standard as a way for measuring people's love for Aurum. Aurum, huh? As the first innocence, he declared that there should be more of those like him. It is presumed his disciples were the beginning of the Holy Party, the Founding Party. Question two, who was the strongest innocence? Easy. Everybody knows the answer to this. You, me, anybody. <laughs> sure, try again. I trust you've got my back. And innocence is the highest category of historical personage in the world. A literal personification of history. Traditionally, an innocence, when anointed, assumes supreme rule over the Occident or the known world in general. At least, the parts that matter. That is so interesting. The literal personification of history, who assumes supreme rule. Like, the past and the present, which then influences the future. I don't know, that is really interesting. Okay. Yes, yes, so interesting. I thought you'd give me the answer to the question. Hmm, I can do better. Okay. So commonly, an innocence does not enforce his or her power through military power. This is seen as unnecessary. The innocence wins because an innocence can't help but win, for their deeds are inevitabilities. Did this help? Yes. Great. Dolores. Pain threshold is saying Dolores. Okay, I'm going to try the others first. Vesper, Vesper Messina. Incorrect. Vesper Messina is not a person, but a defunct state on the southeastern coast of the Occident. It used to take up most of the peninsula before separating into the republics of Vesper and Messina. Care to try again? Franco Negro. Correct. Oh. Named the innocence of militarism. He codified hereditary rule, but at the same time, ended serfdom and established the Inter Isolari Real as the global reserve currency. 
He also established the concept of the nation. Hmm. Franco Negro attempted to solve the rising tensions between the aristocracy and bourgeoisie by building a unified society in which every man has a place and a mission, but at the same time may rise to nobility provided on the strength of his virtue. Only men? Question three. Who was the false innocence? Got it under control. No problem. Solid on this one. It's widespread historical information. <laughs> I mean, I feel like Step in the Despicable sounds like a pretty strong contender, but I'm still going to ask for the hint. Yes, there exists a group called the Founding Party, known as the Holy Party, during the time of the Periconarsian. This, the world's oldest international organization, spends its time in search of either the re-emergence of the innocents or new members. <sighs> Sigh heavily out loud. There seems to be a mix up with the sources. It's not my fault. <laughs> At least it clearly wasn't Dolores Day. She wouldn't be false. She's beautiful. Well, beauty doesn't preclude falseness. But if I say Dolores here, will I take more damage? No. Stop thinking it. I said it wasn't her. Okay. She was true. Okay, Erno Pasternak? Correct. Oh. There have been a number of counter or false innocences. Some assumed to have innocent qualities. Some who just thought so themselves. Occasionally, they have the support of a faction inside the ecclesiastic organization. And accusations of foul play have arisen. The most famous and important of these was Erenau Pasternak. He was into torture, despotism, hymns, mm. cannons, and world conquest, but got defeated and humiliated by Stepan the Despicable of Kedra. Final stretch. You've come so far and learned so much. This is the most important one. Question mm -hmm. four. Who was the greatest innocence? The most important of them all. The most precious to humankind. Is this Dolores? I've got it. Honest. Are you sure this time? I'll bite. Hint me. Of course. This is my thing. The reason I exist in this world. The correct answer is Franco Negro. You're absolutely certain of this? Zero doubts. I'm going to say Dolores Day. Correct. The Mesk might see Franco Negro as the father of nations, but as of this century, there's been a great shift in attitude. Dolores Day has become widely regarded as the greatest innocence. A most radical change to the whole fabric of the world. I'm a little sad now that I didn't try Franco Negro for him to say incorrect. <laughs> Everything from inter travel to the connected world to three consecutive scientific revolutions can be traced back to her. Every decade that passes, she seems less human somehow and more beautiful. Yeah, the intersolar travel, the connected world, it feels like I don't, to me it feels science fictiony, like and it's been so long now, I don't remember the details, but from the map and everything, it's like literal like this is a portal to a different world. Congratulations on finishing the test. The results and your subsequent grade have been calculated. You get a C. Vaguely passable. A solid effort with nothing much else to show. Nice going, mediocrity man. I'll take it. You would have done better if you just left Dolores Day for the end. Dial the Dolores Day down <laughs> a bit. Damn you, you arrogant book. What's going on with you? <laughs> the lieutenant is jolted awake by your furious cursing. <laughs> the book is unfair. Okay. The lieutenant stares at you, his visage unflinching. You are shouting at an inanimate object, like a real weirdo. No wonder you seem to have trouble with the right answers. Put the book away. <laughs> and this is the map. The worn map features the patchwork grid of the streets of Martinez, with directions to appropriately touristy locations. Year 48 resides on the upper right corner. 
trace a path through the grid. Your finger moves through the various streets, across Rue de Song Ghislaine and Rue San Sipa, over San Brun and Martinez North. Finally, coming to a halt on the spot where you are currently standing, although the map gives no such indication itself. For a more detailed view of the map, yes. go to your journal and select the map tab. Perfect. That is what I was hoping for. Okay. This is replacing the lost pool. At least a similar looking metal sphere. Sure. Um, I guess I can see what's back here. You see a set of tattered curtains blocking the way to another room. A strange cage-like trinket dangles from the curtains. Excuse me, officer. The back room is strictly for employees only. Examine the strange cage-like trinket. You see some kind of charm. An irregular polyhedron assembled from bones, sticks, and straw. Inside, a disturbing fish head with empty eye sockets stares at you. I don't know what I expected, but not that. <laughs> this is a traditional Seminese ward, huh. meant to provide protection against ill luck bad dreams, curses, and other supernatural scourges. Who are the Seminese? Inhabitants of Ile de Fantôme, the Seminine Islands down south. Aside from poking at it suspiciously, there is nothing else to do with the fish head charm at this time. The curtains remain shut before you. Okay, shopkeeper, what's behind the curtains? Nothing. Now please go back to browsing the books. Don't you feel compelled to look at the books? The books are all you care about. She fiddles with her pendant. She speaks almost as if she's trying to put a spell on you. Yeah, that's what it seems like. Books. Oddly enough, the more she tries to draw you away from the curtains, the more alluring they become. Yeah, I'm going to pull open the curtains. Just as you're about to pull apart the curtains, the petrified voice of the shop owner cries out once more. Sir, don't touch that. I told you it's off limits for the customers. Her hand is closed around her pendant, her fingers nervously playing with the talisman. Parapsychologically speaking, we're done if you decide to open them. I won't be held responsible for the consequences. It's too dangerous. Dangerous? She looks away, mumbling. Why is everyone always messing with the curtains? Why can't they just buy books like normal people? What is this about the curse? That's why you're afraid? No, it's just a storeroom for the employees, I told you. Now, please, step away from the curtains. Huh. I'm a police officer. I need to get in there. I don't actually have a justification Why? for this. It's not like anyone was killed there. She stops abruptly. Her hand flies over her mouth, baffled by her own bluntness. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be so impolite. Just please don't go there. I can't allow that. You'll only make things worse and unleash the powers. The powers. The curtains do seem frail suddenly. Not robust enough to contain a slippery darkness. Huh. I sense this place calling for me. I must investigate beyond the threshold. You do? My god. Even more reasons not to mess with the curtains. Just step away, dear sir. Okay, I'll step Thank away. You. Let's just talk about this first, all right? There's no reason for you to venture into the unknown. Talking is always good. Go see what she has to say. Yeah, that's a good the idea. The curtains, tattered with age and covered in dust, hang before you, as if taunting you. Yeah, let's talk to her. What is back there? Welcome to Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. My name is Plaisance. The clerk extends a greeting. Yeah, I forgot to talk to you at the beginning. Be welcome, and please take responsibility for the energy you bring into this space. <laughs> I, I could ask for some money. I don't think a shopkeeper is going to give me money. Are you the owner of this store? I am. The proudest owner of our little shop of culture. Her voice is high-pitched as if to give it more penetration. Yeah, the girl outside mentioned the place is cursed, right? Let's see, your daughter is the one standing outside the store, right? Annette, yes, my daughter. I hope she wasn't slacking off again with her nose in science fiction. Tell me, 
Was she at her post, doing her job like a proper girl? Yes, of course. Wonderful. Did you talk to her? Yes. Great. On a scale of one to ten, how compelled were you to buy books after talking with her? Um... I'm gonna play it up. Ten. She was certainly polite and helpful. My precious. Her dedication brings joy to my heart. If you have children, I hope they turn out as great as my Annette. Hmm... All this pressure has made her really anxious. You know, she's been chewing her nails. God! Ugh! I've told her not to do that. It's such a disgusting habit. She'll get over it. Anxiety is a part of life. I don't think she can do anything about she it. She can, if she has enough willpower. This is what's called growing pains. Life isn't easy. Life doesn't give breaks. Come on, ma'am. It's obvious she can't do anything about it. You are placing an unnecessary burden on a young child. <laughs> yeah, what you're doing is wrong. Even I know that. I usually don't know anything. She stands stiff and severe, silently fuming. Ten or so seconds pass without change. She's looking for one, but there simply aren't any good <laughs> arguments for being an asshole. <laughs> oh no. Hold on. I need to invite her inside and apologize. She must be freezing out there. There. I don't know what to say to you. My husband, he tries to teach me business lessons. I have what my mother called a dull mind. All this stress. Hmm. She stops, but her mouth keeps moving. Um. So she doesn't go to school anymore. She's been too busy helping me here. So she studied at home this trimester. This is a temporary solution, of course. Place on snod. I assure you. I, of all people, understand the importance of education. She will be back in school the moment the store takes off. And hell freezes over? Never mind. It's mm. not a good topic to get into. Alright. Um, I mean, I don't... I don't know. It feels weird to dig into the personal stuff. The woman Something else looks in my... aloof. Her features much softer. Occasionally, she glances at her daughter's silhouette. Oh. Why are you so tight about the curtains? I just want to know what's on the other side. I already told you. It's just a storage room for employees. I don't understand why it's so important to you. Just let it go, officer. Go buy some goddamn books. You're supposed to be drawn to the books. She <laughs> recites it like it's a poem, or like she's playing a role she's grown tired of. She's so tense, it's a miracle she hasn't snapped in half yet. It's just a storage room. Why does it have a Simonese ward protecting it? It's just for it? decoration. She wavers under your gaze, mouth pressed into a tight-lipped smile. Then something breaks. Okay, fine. It's just because this place is cursed. Just like everyone said. They don't call it the doomed commercial area for nothing. Are you happy now, officer? Happy that you've ruined everything? She closes her eyes and starts mumbling something to her pendant. Host of hosts, she prays. Guard me and my honest business venture from the curse that lurks behind the curtains. How does the curse manifest itself? The curse is so much worse than you could imagine. It's a disease, eating at the very foundation. A shiver runs through the woman as she looks around at the dimly lit store. It's the curse of financial distress, of ruin and bankruptcy. She peers at the curtains again. Um, ah, Annette mentioned that the previous tenants have experienced some financial troubles. It's not just that, officer. We're dealing with something supernatural here. It's the cacodemons feeding off bad business practices and disappointing income statements. Oh, no. There's something wrong with this building, I can tell you. Ever since I arrived, I've sensed an eerie lingering presence. As if I was unwanted here. Have you sought help from anyone? Yes. I've contacted numerous parapsychologists and even a pair of Simonese mediators. They provided me with the wards. She nods at the strange cage-like trinket on the curtain. The wards help to keep the doom at bay and protect us against the darkness that lies further in the building. Even though now I fear, it's not enough. Is your pendant part of the wards as well? Oh, this? No, it's a special Hymian amulet, blessed by desert pygmy shamans with a spell of compulsion. 
It's to compel people to buy books. Uh huh. There are numerous spells cast throughout the store. I had the books anointed with a different inducement spell, for example. It's guaranteed to boost sales 15%. Oh my goodness. Desert pygmy shamans. That sounds like a rather questionable way to describe a group of people. Yes, thank you. Doesn't seem like the spell is working. There are no customers around except you. There are hardly any customers in the store. Do you think it's really working? Sir, I am well educated in the commercial and esoteric arts. I know what to do and what to avoid. She knows just her spectacles. Hmm. Have you thought about a sale? You could learn some customers. Discount my wares? I can see, sir, that you don't value books very highly. I would have appreciated a sale, though. Besides, this would only tempt the phantoms of doom. They can sense the desperation, you know. Ah. Okay, I will take the case. Most certainly not. Aww. I don't want anyone who's not <laughs> familiar with the psychic arts to get involved in this mess. Stay away. Leave the spirits be, so they can return to their slumber. My liege, you know what this case calls for? A para-detective. <gasps> A para-detective. Oh my god. I am going to try to convince her. Come on, come on, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Do it Slither do it. Yes. up to her, you silver-tongued fiend. Show her what world-class perfidy looks like. <laughs> Wait, what if I don't want to lie? You're not lying. You're giving her peace of mind. The means are thus justified. <laughs> Ma'am, I've come here to help. I've handled paranatural situations before. I can't wait for Kim's reaction to this. Are you sure? Don't think I haven't seen charlatans before. I've returned from the void. A paradetective from a long line of paradetectives. You're no paradetective. You look nothing like one, and you're clearly a drinker. Pardon me for being so blunt, but... You look like one. It's true. The lieutenant keeps his usual stony calm. He silently picks out his notebook. Okay. I admit I've, <laughs> I've had my share of drinks, only because the spectral realm is parapsychologically taxing. How do you know all this? Here we go. Um, I, I'm i not sure about Simonies. I'm going to go with the Void Revenant. I have the powers to debat all the bad energies. I should have realized a pattern lies within the fabric. The hand of fate guides us. Our meeting couldn't have been mere chance. But I am not the only one at risk. I have to think of my daughter. You are certain you can help us? Keep us safe? I can't allow any collateral damage to hit us. Oh my god. I can't ask him to vouch for me for this. Tempting as it is. Oh my god. He's... Oh god. No problem whatsoever. If you promise, good officer, then you might be our last hope. Do you swear it? A hand on your heart. On my honor. Thank you, sir. There's one more thing I haven't told you about yet. The entity. Oh god. Do not act surprised. You know of these things, sire. Um, the entity? Yes, a malignant entity that lives inside the chimney. It takes the form of a woman. A witch, most likely. She or it must be connected to the curse somehow. Um, I'm not going to go with that. I'm going to go with the passage between heaven and hell, of course. Yes. That chimney is part of the building's central furnace, and it's enormous. She has barricaded herself behind some metal security curtains. God knows what she's doing there. Okay, so it's an actual person. Some unnatural magic, I assume. Wait, is it you Cindy? You should go find the entity and ask what happened to all the companies in the building. What is the source of this curse? Here's the key to the warded door behind the curtains. Take it. Yes. Oh, and please do return to me after you've looked round. I'm quite anxious to know what she has to say about the curse. What you discover in there. What you discover? Probably just some office space. Don't be scared. Farewell for now, book peddler. Oh my god. I can't believe I'm doing this. 
but also I am out of time for today so I shall have to explore the curse or whatever I decide to do next time. Alright, catch you later. Bye.